All right. Okay, so we are going to start in a few minutes. We still have some people signing on. Um, we still have some people signing on. So we will be starting in, I'll give another minute or two. So everybody just sit back um, and relax for, for a minute and then we'll get started. Okay, we have a bunch of people on, so we're going to start. Does everybody hear me? Do you hear me, Helena? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so everybody, welcome um, to tonight's webinar. Uh, we, we have a few new people here. We have a bunch of new people here. So um, thank you for joining. Um, this is our sixth webinar. Um, I'm really excited about it. We usually have them monthly. Uh, and we have some really exciting topics. We have some exciting topics coming up. So, you know, I, at the end, I'll tell you to go and check them out, but, you know, to see what, what's coming up. But, um, but we do have some exciting topics and we have some past topics that were really, really great um, and great conversations. And they are all up on our website on fairmeals.org. So definitely go check those out. Uh, but tonight we're going to be speaking about healthy and affordable holiday eating. Um, so I really like this topic because I think that the holidays can be a time of anxiety for a lot of people can be a time of anxiety, both for people who try to, who want to, you know, typically eat a healthy or try to eat a healthy diet um, because they think they almost need to overdo it and, and eat everything in sight or eat things that are, you know, labeled unhealthy. Um, and, and the affordable part of it also, I think that a lot of people tend to think that, um, we need to overdo it in terms of how much we're making. Um, and that can tend to become pretty unaffordable. So I'm really here to show you that there are ways to both eat on the holidays healthy and affordably. So that's really what we're here for tonight. Um, and then a few, before I continue on to the, to the next slides and I introduce our moderator, Elena, for tonight, um, I'm just gonna let you guys know that um, in the past, and it's worked out really, really nicely, um, as you have questions, please feel free to send them in. Um, Elena will be uh, will be monitoring the chats, uh, the, the questions that are coming in in the chat box. So please feel free to send those in. And um, if we have time, which we typically do, we will answer them as the night goes along, uh, as the webinar goes along. If for some reason we run out of time or, or we see we need, kind of need to get moving, we will save them for the end, but we've typically had enough time um, and it gets conversation going really, really nicely. So feel free to participate, um, you know, as we go, as we move along tonight. So just a little bit about myself and for those of you who have been to all of our webinars or some of our webinars, I apologize for repeating this, uh, but I just wanted to introduce, introduce myself. My name is Ariel Kestenbaum. I am, am a registered dietitian. Uh, and I have a master's in science from uh, from NYU. I am the founder of Fair Meals. So I'm here really to offer nutritional guidance and easy recipes that empower families to eat well on a budget affordably. Uh, and I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I know how difficult it can be to provide meals for my families that are both convenient, affordable, and healthy. So with this resource, I really hope to help families from all walks of life for really just the average person and the average family. Um, so a little bit about Fair Meals. So we're a free online platform offering families healthy, simple, and affordable meal solutions. We are a 501c3 status nonprofit. Uh, so, you know, feel free, obviously, all of our resources, all of our programming is free, but feel free to, um, you know, to go on our website to donate, uh, but that's obviously up to you, uh, and all of that will be at the end in case that's something you're interested in doing, but um, nonetheless, we're happy that you're here tonight joining us. 
Our mission is to really empower families with nutrition education, step-by-step -step recipes, and budget planning to make meals healthy, easy, and affordable. Uh, and we have a, a long-term vision um, of really combating or helping to combat America's chronic disease crisis by making healthy food an option for every family and really making everyone know that it's an option. I think um, providing them with the tools and the education and the resources to let them know that healthy food is an option really for everyone. Um, and then a little bit about our moderator, Elena. So she is a single mom of four daughters. So kudos to you on that alone. Um, and is best known for her um, award-winning blog, The Positive Mom, which has inspired millions of moms in over 158 countries to turn their once upon a time into their happily ever after. And I have to say, I started following her um, about a month and a half ago. And for that short time, I felt very inspired. Um, she's extremely motivating and inspiring. And I really recommend all of you following her because she has a great great um, social media platform and blog. And I, I very, very much recommend it. Um, and her mission is to provide moms with emotional wellness skills, strategies, and steps to fight peace, break unhealthy cycles, which we all get into, um, and to feel whole. So she, just a little bit about her educational background, she holds a home and family study certificate from Brigham Young University, Idaho, is a certified facilitator of Aroma Freedom, Mastery of Self-Love, the passion test, dream building, and the success principles. She's also a guerrilla marketing master trainer, as well as a graduate of the Steve Harvey School for Business Acceleration and the Steve Harvey School for Personal Transformation. So she has quite the extensive background. Um, and without further ado, I want to uh, introduce Elena Fernandez. Thank you, Ariel. I am so just privileged and honored mm -hmm. to be here. I love what Fair Meals is doing and your vision to really empower families is something that we share in common and I'm really just excited for all the information that you're going to be sharing today and I'm really committed to get this out into the world because this is something that we need as moms and just as humans in general to to be healthier and to have more access to affordable healthy meals. Thank you for what you do. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for being here. So, okay. Um, so before we start, um, I'm going to put out our two polls. We have two poll questions. Um, I'm going to put them both out up here. I'm going to give everybody like a minute to answer the poll questions. Uh, and then we're going to get started. So give me one second. Okay. Okay. So everybody should, should take like 30 seconds to answer these questions and then we will um we'll talk, we'll we'll kind of jump right in. Please let me know if you have any questions Thanks. about the poll too. All right, I'm gonna end it here. I just gave everybody 50 seconds. So that should be good. And we got some good answers here. So, all right, I'm gonna end this poll. Um, and now we're going to, um, to start talking about, oops, let's jump in around. Okay, so holiday meal prep on a budget. So the first poll question, asked, what is a good tip for shopping on a budget during holiday time? So this is a little bit of a trick question. Um, I'm going to go through all of these, and then we're going to talk about uh, the poll question and why it was a bit of a, of a trick question. And Elena, feel free to share any, any anecdotes you have or anything you want, um, you know, as I'm speaking. But um, so holiday meal prep on a budget. So the first thing we want to do, right, is to, is to meal prep. Um, and that is, that's, that's what we, you know, some people say they want, they meal prep for every week, which is great. And meal prep can look a hundred different ways for a hundred different people. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to meal prep. 
Um, but I always tell people that meal prepping for a holiday is going to, in the long end, um, really, really help save them money. Um, and the reason being is because it can, like I've mentioned in the beginning, holiday time, holiday cooking can become very, very overwhelming. Um, so what can we do to make things easier? And there is a lot of times that we're going to do things up front that may be a little bit more, take a little bit more time. There's more time investment up front, but in the end, it's going to help us save money. So uh, the first few things that I want to talk about is really, um, you know, these, these small little tips to, to help get us, get us on our way to meal prep for the holidays. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to check our cupboards, our pantries, our fridge, freezer for ingredients that you have already. And I am um, totally uh, guilty of this myself, but I tend to see a recipe that I'm making and I order all of the ingredients. And then a few days later, I'll see, oh, I had that in my pantry. I think it's really, really good to get into practice. Again, speaking of things, time investment up front, to get into practice of um, making a list of things that we have, like inventory, keeping inventory, or even a loose inventory, right? It doesn't have to be exact, but at least a loose inventory of things that we have so that we're not going out and, um, you know, and buying ingredients that we have already. So it's good to just know what we have. Um, we don't have to only make um, the, you know, foods using these ingredients, but we can make up a menu and say, okay, these are the ingredients I have. I, I, I need rather, let me see what I have already at home. It seems like we have a few questions coming in. For some reason, I'm not able, oh. Yes. I see, okay. We yeah. have Debbie. And she's asking what you recommend are the standard staples of food for the healthy and tasty meals that we should try and keep in hand, on hand. So she wants to know what are those staples that you recommend, Ariel? Um, okay, I'm going to go through that. Let me just finish. I'm going to go through this and then I'm going to answer that question. It's a very good question. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go through this first and then, then I'm going to answer, answer that question. I just saw like a bunch of things coming in. So I wanted to make sure we weren't missing anything or something. Someone, everyone was able to hear me. Um, okay. So, right. So we wanted to check the cupboards. Um, we want to opt for less popular items. So that was that trick question on the poll. Um, so sometimes actually the more popular items, we can find them on sale and we can find them for more affordable pricing. Um, things like pumpkin or, you know, or anything of that sort. But, um, you know, like pumpkin puree, you can find right now on sale in, in most supermarkets. But um, there are some other ingredients that, you know, may be very popular at this time of year that they almost take advantage of you and they make them more expensive. So, you know, try to plan your menu around things maybe that are not as popular. And if you know for sure that they're not on a deal, maybe don't include them. Um, because things that are less popular can are going to be at their normal prices or, at, you know, their more affordable prices. So things that are more popular, they sometimes are going to double and triple those prices. So they tend to get a little bit more expensive. Um, also maximize leftovers. Um, this is a really good one. This is this is obviously not so much for, for the meal prep, but this is for after um, or, or even um, you know, we can prep for those leftovers, right? So we know what we're going to have. We don't always know what leftovers we're going to have, but we can have some loose idea of what we can do with the leftovers of the foods that we're making, right? So Thanksgiving's on a Thursday, so we have a weekend coming up. So what foods can we make? What meals can we make out of these leftovers that we potentially are going to have? Um, shop the sales, right? Again, you maybe have to go to more than one store, more than one supermarket, um, but again, this time investment that we're going to be putting up front um, can be very helpful. Uh, so, so definitely go out there, shop the sales, look out for coupons. So I know coupons may seem really, really almost like where are we finding them anymore? But actually a lot of supermarkets, you should, you should subscribe to their e-blasts and their newsletters because a lot of them actually send them out in emails these days. And I find that, and I've actually um, subscribed to a few of the local supermarkets around me um, just to kind of see how that works. And they do, they have deals almost every day they're sending out coupons. So try to collect these coupons and even saving, you know, 50 cents, a dollar here, a dollar there, all of that can really add up and it can help us you know, with our holiday meal prepping, and ultimately it can help us save money. And buy in bulk. So definitely I'm not going to say buy everything in bulk. Um, 
if, you know, every ingredient, but if there are certain ingredients, like certain grains, let's say, or certain beans, um, things that stay really well that you and your family use often, definitely buy them in bulk. Um, this is a tip that I'm a huge fan of here at Fair Meals. I've spoken about it a lot on, you know, multiple of my webinars um, because it really, really does help save uh, save money in the long term. And, um, you know, when you get it home and when you get home and you may not have room for the big package of it, you can divvy it up however you want, store it however you want. But buying things in bulk that your family uses very often um, is, is a huge, huge money saver. Um, okay, so back to the question. So what do you recommend are the standard staples of food for the healthy and tasty meals that we should try and keep on hand? So that's, you know, that's a really, really um, subjective, I think it's a very subjective answer. Um, I think like I mentioned that, which is why I wanted to go through this slide first. I think um, just like the buying in bulk, things that are, you know, that you're, you use every day or, or during the week for your families is what are things that you should have on hand, right? Um, I mean, a few things I'm going to say are, you know, probably olive oil, right? Olive oil is a really, really easy way to get a healthy fat. And then we're going to speak about fats um, in a slide or two. Um, but it's a healthy way to get fats in, right? So olive oil is something it's easy. It's easy to keep in our house. Um, we can use it in, you know, in cooking and salad dressings and, you know, marinades, whatever it is. So those are def that's definitely a staple, I would say that most people should have in their house, it's a good way to get that healthy fat in. Um, and it, it can be used in tons of dishes. So that's something I would say buy in bulk, right, you could buy the large container of of, um, of olive oil, because it can be very, very helpful um, in making sure that you know, we don't run out of it very often, but we use it. We that's use it okay. pretty often. I think it's time for our next poll. Okay, so food for thought. So what does healthy mean to you? Um, so I, I spoke about this also in, in a webinar a while back. What does healthy mean for you? And again, this is a very, very subjective answer, right? Um, so I, this is where our next poll question comes from. What are the macronutrients? So we actually got um, a bunch of, most of you got it right, but we did get a few people who said, um, who answered the other two, which were vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, and minerals, and then proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So the correct answer is proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Those are, are the macronutrients um, that we are going to, you know, we want to make sure that we get into our diet. So um, I want to talk about this with holiday, with ho in terms of like holiday cooking, because I think that, again, it's so easy to, to kind of get lost in wanting to make this big elaborate meal. But in the end of the day, we really want to also make sure that there's a balance. We're making some sort of balanced meal. And if we keep our focus on making sure we have these macronutrients in some part of this meal, it's going to actually help us. And it's going to help us kind of stay focused. So... Um, so the basics, so there's three macronutrients, right? We have proteins, we have carbohydrates, and we have fats. So the idea is we want to balance these three key nutrients to help us feel good inside and outside, inside and out. So they're important for energy, for growth, and for metabolism. So we really do need all three of these. And I'm going to speak about each one of them a little bit more in depth. Um, and this does not include those micronutrients, right? So some of you said those, the minerals, so minerals and trace minerals, these are all micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, these are all micronutrients. They're also super, super important, um, but they're not one of the three macronutrients. And I plan to have a webinar in the future talking about micronutrients. It can get very, very in-depth and complicated, but I definitely want to kind of like dumb it down a little bit um, because I think they're really, really important. And I think it's something important that we're all cognizant of, but that's for another discussion. But um. But tonight we're going to be speaking about these protein, the proteins, the carbohydrates, and the fats, and why we should be focusing on these as as making sure we're having a balanced a balanced meal. That's amazing. Uh, when you get into the fats, so I know that you're going to speak about it in depth, each of the nutrients, uh, the micronutrients. But there's someone in the audience that wants to know what oils are considered healthy fat besides olive oil. So when we get there. Um, that's something that 
she would like to get answered. Yes, for sure. I will definitely get into that. Um, we're going to start with carbohydrates. Um, and then I think fats is next. Uh, and so we will speak about that and I'll speak about all the healthy fats. Um, so carbohydrates is one of those things that, um, gets bad rep in the, in the, in the diet, in the diet world. Um, I think a lot of people hear this term and they almost freak out and they're like, oh, I don't need carbohydrates. I don't need carbohydrates. So the fact of the matter is that we all basically all eat carbohydrates, but you may not know it. Uh, there are two types of carbohydrates. There are simple carbohydrates and there are complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are, are things like white bread, white pasta, white rice, cookies, cake, candy, things that basically have sugar and, and things that make it yummy and what, you know, will make it delicious. Um, but there's, there's not much nutrients in there at all. Um, and it's not to say that we should never have simple carbohydrates in our diet, because if you've been here and you know me, you know that I'm all about moderation and I'm all about including everything into our diet, but our real focus should be on complex carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates are carbohydrates that have fiber in them, right? So we're getting some nutrients in there. Um, we're getting, uh, that bran, that bran from that, from the, from the wheat seed, uh, that's where we're getting the protein, the, the fiber rather. That's what we want. That's that nutrient that we're getting in complex carbohydrates. So we're getting that from whole wheat, whole grain products. We're getting that from vegetables, from, you know, root vegetables, like sweet potatoes, let's say. Uh, we're getting that from fruit. All fruits are carbohydrates. We're getting that in yogurt. Yogurt's a carbohydrate, right? Um, so it's really important that we know that. Um, so Carbohydrates are important because they provide the main energy source for our cells and for our body. So you may have heard of, you know, we had the New York City Marathon here last week, right? You may have heard people who are training for marathons or they're doing some sort of, you know, very intense exercise regimen. They, they carb load, right? That's, that's the term that we use. So it's really because those carbohydrates are what our body needs. Our body's feeding off of these carbohydrates. Um, for, for energy. So they're super, super important. So we definitely don't want to disclude them from our diet at all. So people who are saying, telling you they're on no carbo on a no carbohydrate diet, they're on a no simple carbohydrate diet, but they're most probably eating complex carbohydrates because our body needs that. Um, but carbohydrates alone are not enough to keep us full, right? So if we're going to just eat, you know, a sweet potato, it's great but that's not alone, enough alone to keep our bodies full. It may temporarily keep us full, but it's not going to keep us full, um, you know, for a long time, um, which is why we have to include those other two macronutrients, which we'll speak about in a minute. Um, so as I mentioned, they also provide fiber and they're not the enemy, right? So everyone's on those fad diets are saying carbohydrates are the enemy. They're not the enemy. They provide fiber. If you've been here before and you've seen some of my videos and some of my things on my website, you know I am a huge proponent of fiber. I'm a huge proponent of fiber and protein, and I think they should be included in every single meal and snack. Um, so I will say it so many times so that you understand that. And I think fiber and protein actually together are important because the fiber is going to is what's going to help. And, and the protein, rather, when we eat them together, the protein, that carbohydrate that we're going to be eating as a snack, let's say, or in a meal, the protein is going to help from help, you know, prevent our blood glucose or our blood sugars from from spiking, from going up and down too, too quickly. Um, and when that happens, that's when we kind of go to that crash and we get very, very hungry. So um, both of these are super, super important. Fiber is going to be super important. And we're getting this in these in, in these complex carbohydrates. Um, and again, this last, this last key says we want to focus on complex carbohydrates to help promote fullness, right? So sweet potatoes, quinoa, lentils, oats. So again, it's not enough to keep us full. Like it's not enough for it to be the only thing of our meal, the only thing we're eating, um, but they will help promote fullness. And it's a good thing to make sure we're including into our diets, into our meals. This is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have any any questions on this? Uh, just no, just the one about the fat. Okay. And, yeah, everybody's learning a lot. Okay, good. 
Um, and yeah, everyone definitely feel free to ask questions. I know it can be a lot. Um, and this is just skimming the top of it. There's a lot more um, that we can go in depth. And I'll say this at the end, feel free to send you know me an email if anyone has questions, but I'd love to take questions now as well. So, um, so yeah, so that's carbohydrates. Now we are getting to fats. Um, so fats also gets a pretty bad rep, right? Um, and it was pretty old school to, to eliminate fat in, in our diet. It's a very, very old school way of dieting to eliminate fats. And the new way of doing it is to include healthy fats into our diet. Um, so, you know, like, for example, whole milk used to be something, I mean, nobody thought of having whole milk past two years old. Now whole milk is, it, that's a healthy fat. That's a healthy, that's something that we want to include in our diet. And you're seeing more, you know, bloggers and influencers using whole milk because it is a healthy fat. And it is actually, that's, you know, a big positive that I see. Um, you know, a lot of people are, are influent, like a lot of influencers are actually promoting that, which is great. Um, because it, it is a healthy fat. It is something that we should include in our diet if that's something that, you know, we are including in our diets. I know, Elaine, I'm pretty sure you said you're, you're plant-based so and you're vegan, so you may not have dairy, which is, you know, which is fine. And there's ways to get all of these nutrients. And I'm sure somebody will ask me a question about that because, and we can talk about that also, um, because a lot of people always have questions about a plant-based diet um, in, in making sure we're getting all these macronutrients. Um, but we definitely can. So we can speak about that as well. Um, so fat, so they contain the most calories per serving. So um, carbohydrates and um, proteins have four grams per, per serving and fats have nine grams per serving. So they contain the most calories per serving. Um, they may reduce hunger and prevent cravings, but again, it's not enough. So they also help us absorb key micronutrients, right? So there are these vitamins A, D, E, and K, and these are the fat soluble vitamins and all of the other vitamins, the B vitamins, um, the C vitamins, those are all water soluble vitamins. So all of these fat soluble vitamins, we need fats in order to absorb them. So sometimes people will go, um, you know, get labs done and they're going to see that they're low in vitamin D, right? And, you know, vitamin D, a lot of people are low in for other reasons, uh, but if they're low in vitamin A, they're low in vitamin E. And a lot of the reason is because they don't actually have enough fats in their, they don't have enough fat in their diet. So they become, um, you know, they, they're not properly absorbing them. So they become almost deficient or close to being deficient in these vitamins. So it's very, very important that we get this macronutrient. So we want to obviously focus on healthy sources of fats. So healthy sources of fats, and I'm going to get to that oil question in one second, um, things like avocado, flaxseed and chia seeds, nuts and seeds, um, you know, like almonds and walnuts, eggs, um, things like that. So, and then some other, you know, healthy fat oils, right? So there's olive oil, there's avocado oil, fish oil. Um, that's not like a cooking oil we're going to use, but, you know, let's say we're going to have like a fatty, like an oily fish, right? Like a cod or a salmon. Those are really, really good sources of fat. Those have om those omega-3 fatty acids, which are great for like brain development, uh, for eye, you know, for vision. Um, and those are actually hard to find in foods. A lot of people take like an omega-3 supplement for that reason, especially if they don't eat fish. But if we do eat fish, it's a great, great source of that. Flaxseed as well is a great source of those omega-3 fatty acids. Um, so these are all great sources of fat. These are the sources of fat that we want to be getting, right? Dairy also, you know, whole milk, yogurt, whole milk. Um, these are all good sources of fat. These are fats that we need. Our body needs these fats. Like I mentioned, they need them for to help absorb these fat soluble vitamins. So we need to make sure we're getting them. And I like to really emphasize this because so many people I speak to um, still have a little bit of this old school way of thinking. Um, so I, so, you know, I really like to emphasize this. And also, if anybody's familiar with the Mediterranean diet, which is like one of the healthiest diets, it's, it's proven in so many studies to be one of the healthiest diets, they, you know, it's, it's all about healthy fats, right? It's all about fish, 
um, which has these healthy fats and olive oil and nuts and seeds and olives and, and avocado, all of these are healthy fats and they're all included in this Mediterranean diet, which, um, which is a, which is a fantastic diet to follow if anybody, or, or rather, I don't like to use the word diet, but a way of living, a way of eating. It's a great way of eating, um, or even follow loosely. And it really, really emphasizes these healthy fats. Thank you. I love how you say follow loosely, that it's not a mm -hmm. very strict regime, that is something that these are guidelines that are going to help you incorporate them easily into your lifestyle, gives you a sense of freedom and, and playfulness with this whole thing. A hundred percent. And the USDA, for example, right, they give out guidelines too on, on portion sizes, right? I spoke to, I speak yeah. to a lot of people, especially when they want to talk about weight loss. I'm all about portion sizes and the USDA gives guidelines. And some of these guidelines just won't work for individuals. And that's why I like that they are guidelines, right? They're not rules. And that's what a diet should be or, or a way of eating. It should be a guideline, um, you know, generally a general sense of how we should be eating and it shouldn't be, um, we need to follow this or we're doing it wrong. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I appreciate that you appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I can also relate because, um, you know, of my background being Hispanic, there are a lot of staples that are very different from mm -hmm. out of the U.S. or Mediterranean, like you said, but we have a lot of questions about recipes, which I know that is something that we're getting ready to mm -hmm. talk about. Uh, yes. The first one, uh, I, we have two about potatoes. The first one is, uh, since they're a holiday staple, is there any way to make them healthier? And the second one, just to segue on that, is a healthier way to do mashed potatoes using standard potatoes instead of sweet potatoes. So let's, and, and we have more, but I think those two first. Okay, so the first one was how to make sweet potatoes healthier. How to make potatoes, regular potatoes. Healthier. Regular potatoes yeah. healthier. Um, so my biggest thing is to make like a smashed potato where you're any or any sort of recipe that you're leaving the skin on, right? Because the skin is where the fiber is. So we can go back and talk about those carbohydrates and the fiber that I, you know, I'm such a big proponent of. Um, the fiber is the most important thing. So find a recipe that, you know, utilizes that skin. Same with the sweet potato. Find a recipe. You can cut them, um, you can cut them, you know, in circles keep that skin on, right? And we can roast them, put some olive oil, right? Adding a healthy fat, some spices, some herbs, roast them in the oven. That's a great way, a great easy recipe of using a sweet potato or a regular potato. Um, you know, sweet potatoes generally do have some more of those micronutrients, some more vitamins and minerals in them. They have that, you know, um, a lot of antioxidants in them because of that deep color that they have. Um, but potatoes are, are a great source of, you know, of vitamins and minerals too, right? It's a great source of potassium. Um, and, and, and that skin, again, we get that fiber. So leaving the skin on a potato is going to be a great way to really make it healthier. Um, as for a mashed potato, so I know we don't want to keep the skin, by the way, you can mash it, you can keep some skin in there. It actually is delicious. Um, but something to make it a little bit healthier, right? Don't use butter or margarine. Um, use, use an avocado oil or an olive oil. Um, it may not, get as creamy and it may kind of get like a little bit it may not stay as creamy um but if we make it kind of right before we're eating um it it, it will stay final stay and it's, and it's really and it's really equally as delicious in my opinion um and it's definitely a healthier way of making that so um those are just a few of my recommendations and suggestions on i guess I, making it I healthier I love that you mentioned herbs. Could you mention like two or three herbs that you like to use with your potatoes? Because I'm really yes. in that. <laughs> so I, I like, I'm, I'm very into dry herbs. Um, I prefer them actually. So I'm big into oregano, uh, oreg definitely oregano, I'm going to say. And anywhere between thyme and basil, um, anything between thyme and basil. But oregano is definitely a big one. I love using it in marinades. I love using it. Um, on chicken with some other spices. I think it has really, really good flavor. So those are definitely some herbs and, and any of them will work on potatoes, right? And potatoes, actually a white potato, rosemary works really, really nicely on that. Um, and it has a really like great, really, really great smell, very pungent. It may not be for everybody, but it goes really nicely and it pairs really nicely with potatoes. So 
um, and sweet potatoes as well. So those are definitely some herbs that I, I think are, are work well in a potato recipe. I love that. Well, we have two more questions real quickly. Okay, sure. The mm -hmm. first one is if, if someone's uh, serving a Thanksgiving turkey, is there a way that is uh, prepared uh, healthier or should they buy frozen or fresh? So some ways to make it healthier. Um, as the turkey itself, frozen or fresh, it won't really make a difference. I mean, the, the, the white meat, the turkey breast is generally going to be the healthier part of the turkey, but it's also Thanksgiving. So everybody should just enjoy what they like. Um, in terms of making it healthier, using, you know, probably a dry, a dry rub, um, you know, a dry rub or a brine and that sort of, that sort of sense is probably going to be healthier than using, you know, sauces because those tend to have, you know, a little bit more sugar in them or whatever it is. Um, but again, that being said, it's Thanksgiving and everybody should, should, it's, it's, everybody should make what they enjoy. Um, and that's, that's really all I'm really going to say about that because there are definitely ways to make it healthier. Um, but it's also about enjoying what we're eating. And if, you know, once a year you make this unbelievable turkey and you, you know, people make, what are those, like they fry those fried turkeys that they, they I don't even know what they do then. And people love that. Go for it. Enjoy it. Right. <laughs> so everybody should yeah. do, everybody should do what, um, what they, what they, what they want and, and, you know, what they're going to enjoy and what their families are going to enjoy, because it's about being with family. It's about enjoying the food together. And if that's what they're going to enjoy, um, then that's what it should be. Oh, what a beautiful message. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, then the last question, we're going to talk about that after you cover the protein because it's mm -hmm. about recipes. And I know it's a good segue to our next segment. Okay, great. So I'll, I'll go through the recipes and then I mean, through the protein and then I'll, we'll, we'll listen to that question. So protein, so proteins um, reduces hunger and prevents cravings. So more so than carbohydrates. They sustain energy levels and balance blood sugar. So that's what I was saying before, right? So if we're having a, a snack, let's say, right, we're having a cheese stick. Um, uh, rather, we're having a fruit. Let's say we're having a peach. It's always a good thing to then pair that with like a cheese stick, right? That's like always my go-to snack. I think it's a really great snack or some nuts, right? Something that has some protein in there um, because that can help stabilize our blood sugar. So it won't spike too quickly. Um, so it, that will help us prevent that will prevent us from, you know, feeling tired and sluggish. Um, and we want to focus on lean proteins most of the time. And I highlighted most of the time because, um, you know, if you're going to like the steak that has, you know, something that's a little bit fattier or not as lean, we should be able to enjoy that as well, right? I think probably a lot of you are getting this sense that I'm very into moderation is everything and moderation is key, which is true. Um, but on our day-to-day -day lives and, and even, even on the holidays, right? We have a lot of big meals coming up, right? So, so focus on the, you know, on, on these lean proteins. So we have like chicken breast, turkey breast, and especially maybe not on Thanksgiving day itself, but on, on the weekend after, right? Let's use that turkey breast, the extra turkey that we have to make like a turkey salad, um, right? With some mayo and some cucumber and some celery and pepper and, and you know, make like a, like a chicken salad, but with turkey breast or with chicken breast. Focus on lean fish and tofu and beans um, and things of that sort. Focusing on lean protein is a really good thing. And we should always, even, you know, during our Thanksgiving meals, we should always have a lean protein choice. Um, because it's, it's a good thing for us to get, you know, our heads focused in on that, that this is something to be focused on um, and then to, to prioritize rather. Okay. Did we get any questions on protein or should we go on to? Uh... No, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. let's get into the, to the question. Yes. So the question is, do you have a recipe for a side dish that incorporates a lot of the nuts and seeds you're talking about? So when you were talking about the nuts and seeds and also, oh, I, yeah, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> we just got a question about the protein. So I, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, there are no red meats on the protein list and are there any ones that are red meat based? Or are they? Uh, so yeah, so I, they're typically not 
they're not considered a lean protein. But that being said, we can get things that are leaner. For example, ground beef, we can, or there are leaner cuts, I should say, right? So ground beef, for example, you can go into the store. um, And sometimes they are typically a little bit more expensive, um, like a leaner ground beef, right? You you ask for lean ground beef or extra lean ground beef. There's not as much fat in there. Like when you cook it, you're going to see there's not as much like juice and fat coming out of that because they are a little bit leaner. Um, And there are definitely leaner cuts of meat that, you know, have little to no fat at all. So there are, I'm going to say leaner cuts. Um, They're not typically don't, they don't typically fall under the, the lean protein category, but there are ones that are lean and that are, you know, totally okay to be eating, um, even during the week, um, to, you know, to add to our diet and they're good sources of iron and we should be including red meat into our diet. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So some of these, these are just take it or leave it. Um, I always like to include recipes into my, my webinars for those of you that have been here, you know that. Um, and I wanted to add things, obviously, that kind of come into, um, you know, what, what, what we're talking about, right? So here's a sheet pen Thanksgiving dinner. And I know, you know, a lot of people this year are definitely getting together with their families more, you know, than last year, even. Uh, but some people are still not some people are still going to be alone. And this is a great, great dinner for, you know, someone's like immediate family, or if it's just, you know, a couple or, or even somebody who's, who's going to be alone. This is a really, really great way to, to be festive, um, to include turkey, but that is very, very healthy and includes tons of great, you know, vegetables and ingredients and nutrients. So a sheep pan Thanksgiving dinner. So we have a turkey breast, we have sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, olive oil, rosemary, which I spoke about before, um, and sea salt. And you can really swap out any of these vegetables and add in anything that interests you more. Um, and you're really just going to, you know, bake this on 350, um, get all of the vegetables cooked, everything cooked together. And it's a, it's a really, really easy and it's a delicious meal. Um, so it's, it's an option for, for people who, you know, don't want to make a whole turkey or don't want to make half turkey. And it's a really great option. It's delicious. And you're still getting all of this festive, um, festive foods and ingredients in there. That's fabulous. I love that. Yeah. And it's a great for, it's a great weeknight dinner too. So, uh, definitely, um, definitely everyone should take that. Um, so this is a Waldorf tuna salad, and this is going to be more, um, more for like a, you know, like an appetizer or let's say like a pass around, right? If somebody is having like some pass rounds before, uh, before the main, the main event. Um, so this is just a, a Waldorf tuna salad. So it's really easy. It's canned tuna. Um, Greek yogurt is really substituting mayo, but by all means you can use mayo. Uh, mayo again is one of those things that have, you know, have that healthy fat in there. So it's, it's really not, and we don't need to use too much of it. Right. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, celery, pecans, which are very festive, uh, and apple, um, mix all these ingredients. We can serve them on an apple slices. You can chop the apple up and add it into the salad. Um, and it's just a really, really easy, um, easy thing, easy pass around. And it includes, you know, we have these lean proteins, we have carbohydrates and we have fats in there. Right. So it's all, uh, these are all they include all of these uh, macronutrients that we spoke about. It's so about. beautiful too. Great presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And that, food, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you if that kind of so- sounds like the that it matches the side dish that we were asking about because it incorporates those nuts in there. Definitely. It's definitely, um, definitely something we can include. I actually wanted to, um, I had a segment uh, that was on NBC Richmond, Virginia, and it aired this morning. Um, and it uses the recipe was in there. Um, the recipe that I that I um, demoed on on TV was used uh, pumpkin seeds and used pecans. Um, it was a salad. So I used a and you it's on my Instagram. Now you guys can go see it and it soon should be up on the website, the, the segment. Um, but it was a spinach based salad. You can use any greens you want. Um, I had some butternut squash actually in the fridge. I added um, some chopped red onion, 
um, some sliced pears just to give it a little bit of sweetness. Um, and then I used pecans and I used um, butternut, uh, sorry, pumpkin seeds. So th that's a great, great recipe um, to kind of incorporate and to highlight those nuts and seeds that I was talking about. So I'm glad somebody asked that because I was actually aired this morning and it's a really, really good recipe. I actually ate it for lunch that day and it was so delicious with the honey mustard dressing um, and really highly recommend people add that for their Thanksgiving um, meals or their holiday I meals that. rather. I, I want to say that it's at fair meals on Instagram. If you want to yes. check that out. And mm -hmm. uh, we also have one more question. Sure. I love this. Everybody's getting, getting so much out of it. And also you're so wonderful to answer questions. So um, someone says, I love your low cost, tasty and healthy recipes you have on your website. I also love them. So that's really cool. However, mm -hmm. I want to be able to make something nice for me and my wife and definitely have turkey in the meal. Um, it says, but we are on a low budget. Do you think I can make a Thanksgiving dinner for both of us for under $50, including the turkey that would be also healthy? Definitely. We don't need to get a whole turkey. Um, they, they sell half turkeys. They sell parts of the turkey, right? So I mentioned like the turkey breast. Um, they sell, you know, portions of the turkey, turkey legs, right? So you don't need, especially if it's just going to be for you and your wife. Um, there's no need really to, uh, to make a, a whole big turkey. Um, you can get those, the, the turkey breast or the turkey legs or whatever part of the turkey that you want that they, you know, that they maybe sell individually in, in your local supermarket uh, or butcher. Um, and you can make that, you know, that sheet pan recipe, or you can make that and just roast some vegetables on the side and you can use frozen vegetables, right? So that's going to lower that cost there as well. Um, it's definitely doable to make something under $50. The most expensive thing will probably be the turkey. But again, if you're not going to be getting the whole turkey, uh, you can you can definitely do that. I love it. Okay, so here's a creamy carrot and tofu soup. So we're using some tofu, carrots, a low sodium vegetable stock that's optional. We can use water as well, onion, garlic, and ginger. So Really, you're gonna you're gonna add all the ingredients, but um, except the tofu, you're gonna you're basically gonna saute the vegetables. Um, you're gonna sweat them almost, right? We want them to get really really soft, um, and then you are gonna add those the carrots, right? We want to get them tender. Um, cook it all with the water or or the low stock veg the low stock the low sodium vegetable stock. Um, get everything kind of cooked together, put it in a blender with the tofu and that tofu is going to cream, really make it really, really creamy, right? And it's also adding a really good source of, of protein, of that lean protein. Um, and this is a great starter. Um, it's also a great meal if somebody wants to, you know, add to that $50 meal or that less than $50 meal. It's a really, really pretty, pretty low budget Um low budget soup so I definitely recommend this and it's really delicious it sounds yummy I took a screenshot and someone in the audience actually wants uh to know if you can please um share some low budget meals on your page and they love your recipes some low budget yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and uh, okay. someone asked, if we buy a whole turkey, what are some good recipes to use the leftovers in the week after Thanksgiving? Um, so a turkey sam a sandwich, um, use some of that turkey on, um, in a sa on a salad. Um, you can make a turkey stew. Right, you put it with a bunch of vegetables and a stock and then and kind of let it sit there and get really, really yummy. You can add it into a soup and make like a turkey soup. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do with leftover turkey. Um, like I said, that turkey sat like the turkey salad, like a chicken salad. Uh, there's a ton of things to do with turkey. Um, and on that note, somebody's asking how long the leftovers last in the fridge or in the freezer to be. I use. So, so the freezer um, can definitely last a few months. Uh, I, I typically like to say it, this, the freezer is a pretty subjective thing. I definitely don't think anything should be in there more than six months. I like to keep things in there 
no longer than two or three months. Um, in the refrigerator, three days. I wouldn't keep anything in there more than three days. Um, you can probably stretch it to a fourth day. I know my husband stretches things to a fourth <laughs> and fifth day, but um, but three days is three days is like if you're going to ask a food safety expert, they're going to tell you three days. Um, in terms of food safety in a freezer, it's not so much about, it's more a preference of like the taste is going to change. The color usually changes, but as a safety issue, it's, it's definitely a few months. Um, but I think at some point it starts to, to just not be as appetizing and enticing. So I would definitely not, not keep it in there more than two or three months. Wonderful. And one more. Mm -hmm. uh, this um, uh, attendee has high cholesterol and um, it's turkey high in cholesterol. And what is another low cholesterol protein you recommend if turkey doesn't work and is fish the only op option? <laughs> so, so cholesterol is actually not what we're looking at anymore. Cholesterol is one of those old school things that we're looking at they actually are taking it off or have taken it off the food label it's we're looking at saturated fat um that's mm -hmm. what's going to give us our high and low cholesterol or what's going to increase increase our cholesterol or our serum cholesterol um so don't worry so much about the actual cholesterol it's not more the saturated fat so again no um you know dark meat definitely will maybe we'll increase it a little bit more, but the white, any white meat of the turkey is, is a pretty safe option for somebody with high cholesterol. Um, and it, it's, it's pretty neutral and it shouldn't do much. It's not going to be, it's not going to be super beneficial for increasing our HDL cholesterol, which is that good cholesterol that we want to increase. And that will be increased by things like good fats and things like that, but it also will not increase our LDL um, too much or at all. So it's definitely something that can be included in the diet. Yay. Okay. So we're, we're getting to the end. Um, so healthy eating is more than food, um, right? So we want to listen to our body. It's really, really important. If there's something that we're really, really craving, we want to listen to it. Say yes to foods that you love. Um, don't, you know, don't deprive yourself things, everything in moderation. I speak about that all the time. And I'm a really, really big believer in that. Um, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have any no lists, right? We can, we can generally follow these, these guidelines and, and a healthy diet and we should, um, but we should be able to include pretty much everything, especially foods that we love into our diet. Um, and especially on the holidays, right? On the holidays, we really want to include foods that we love because that's what makes the holidays so great. Um, don't be afraid to say no, um, to, to say no also. Uh, enjoy the company around you, obviously, um, you know, whether it's with friends or with family or with both. Um, just some safety, some safety tips here, right? Chew slowly and breathe between bites, right? We don't want to, um, mm -hmm. first of all, we don't want to have any indigestion. Chewing slowly, taking breaths, drinking water, um, that can all, you know, help digest properly and also can help, um, you know, make sure that we don't overeat, you don't eat too much. Um, so we want to make sure that we're eating slowly. Uh, and also don't comment on other people's eating habits. I know that um, that happens a lot, uh, especially when we're around family and people, oh, I guess yeah. you're hungry, you know, going <laughs> back for seconds. So don't comment on that because nobody knows anybody else's relationship with food and um, a relationship with food someone's relationship with food is extremely personal and can be extremely, extremely sensitive to them. Um, so it's something I really like to remind people. It should not ever, there's nobody should ever comment on it. Nobody's husband, nobody's wife, nobody's cousin, brother, parent, um, because it, you don't know how it's affecting them mentally as well. So I always, I just wanted, that's something I just wanted to add. Um, yeah, this is incredible. I love this last tip so much. And I wanted to ask you real quick, because what, sure. if, what if somebody comments on your eating habits? Do you have a quick um, <laughs> comeback? <laughs> uh, I, I usually try to just ignore it or I say, yeah, I am. If someone says, oh, I guess you're hungry. I say, yeah, I actually am hungry. Um, you know, try to 
try to diffuse the situation. You obviously don't want to make it more dramatic than it needs to be. And then we don't want to make it a bigger conversation, especially if we are at a table with family. Um, but, but, uh, my personal opinion is to try to diffuse the situation or, or make a comment back to them. Oh, okay. I guess you're not hungry. Something that will kind of just get them to be quiet. I think that's, that's really what it is. Um, that, that would be my opinion. That's probably what I would do. Um, I've definitely had comments thrown at me and I can't remember what I've responded, but, um, it's usually probably my, my first instinct is to try to get them to be quiet. So it's probably been something to diffuse that situation. That's fantastic. Perfect. And we have one more question sure. before we end. And yeah. it, is it overdoing it when you have turkey and then you want to have another protein like lamb or steak? Um, I mean, during the week, it's probably not necessary. But again, on the holidays, do what do what you want, do what's going to make you feel good. Um, and that's what this is all about. It's all about feeling good um, and eating, eating well. Um, do you, do you need to do that? It's, that's up to you. If you're still hungry, sure, go for it, right? What, one of these tips were listen to your body. If your body's still craving something, your body still, still wants something, then you should listen to it. Um, if you're feeling completely stuffed, but it's there and you don't want to waste it. I mean, save it for another time, right? Save it for leftovers. We spoke a lot about leftovers. So yeah. uh, definitely, definitely an important thing to, to, to listen to your body. I think that's the best thing I'm going to say. Yeah. I love this so much because like you said, food is our relationship with food is personal, but also it's mm -hmm. our experience, you know, the experience mm -hmm. of actually sitting down and eating your food. And when you talk about that, it should be joyful and we should own it. I feel it's so empowering. And that's why I love so much what you do. And there's yeah, yeah, yeah. people saying that it's being amazing, so informative. Debbie singing your praises in the chat. This is Thank real you. wonderful. Thanks. So if anyone has any other questions, I'm happy to take them, uh, but feel free to email me. Um, there's an email here, info at fairmeals.org. You can also email me at ariel at fairmeals.org. That's A-R-I-E-L-L-E -L -L -E at fairmeals.org. Um, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, and obviously check out our website for you know past webinars if you want to watch some tips, tricks, recipes. Uh, and some future webinars as well. So um, thank you all for coming tonight. And Elena, thank you for being here and for moderating and for um, all of your uh, all of your your commentary. And um, I really appreciated you know hearing your your side of things as well. And um, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Any other questions before we go to? I think not. I just wanted to okay. say I love your vision, what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for all you do to help families around the world. And everybody needs to follow and jump on this train. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Well, actually, we just got two questions real quick. <laughs> Is anyone still on? No, I think everyone went off. So okay, okay. nobody's on anymore. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Just oh, thank you. you. That was so awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great yeah. webinar. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh my gosh, I learned so much. You're you're just a fountain of insight. Thank you, and yeah. definitely definitely be in touch. I'd love to. Uh, to yeah, collaborate absolutely. again. Yeah, I would Thank love that you. too. I want to share it. So once it's up on the website, I want to share it as a sure. replay. I'll share it in all of my different. Amazing. Thank yeah, you so much. I'll definitely, I'll send you, I'll send you a, uh, an email when it's up. Yes. All and right. anything else that has to do with moms, just thank you. Yeah, just thank let you. me know. And I'm right, here thanks. to support you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>